If we take a look at this photo on the left, we can see a glass filled with water and oil. Now, as you'd expect, the oil has separated from the water and obviously the two don't like each other. Now, if we pay attention to the photo on the right here, we have a glass of ordinary milk. Now, the milk appears white all the way through. There's no layers in there. And so that's how we normally see milk. However, milk is actually made of similar things to what we see on the left. The milk is made of water and fats with some proteins in there as well. So why do they look so different and why has the milk not formed layers? Well, the truth is that oil, it's true, doesn't like water and it will separate from water. However, if we can break oil down into tiny little droplets, then we can persuade it to be dissolved in water. A mixture of oil or fats and water, in this case, is known as an emulsion. Okay, an emulsion. So the milk is actually an emulsion, whereas the oil and the water on the left is just oil and water and they haven't mixed properly. Now milk is just one example of an emulsion and milk as we know we can pour it and drink it just as if it was a, any other liquid. Other emulsions will be more solid, a good example of that is mayonnaise. That is just a result of what makes up the emulsion. So mayonnaise has egg yolks in it which makes it a lot more sort of solid. Now in an emulsion we need something in there which stops the oil and the water or anything else separating out into layers like we can see obviously on the top left. Now, any substance that does that is known as an emulsifier. So it creates, if you like, or it maintains an emulsion, and it's known as an emulsifier. And so it just prevents the formation of layers. Now, another example of this is ice cream. Ice cream is obviously meant to be really creamy and smooth. However, if you've ever eaten ice cream um, out of a tub, and then it's melted, and you've put it back in the freezer, you'll notice that when you go to eat it again, the edges on the top are sort of, they're more solid, they're almost like ice. And that's because they, in theory, they are ice, because water makes up part of ice cream. And when we melt it, some of the water will separate out and we'll get slight layers. When we freeze it, because the separation has occurred, the water at the top actually freezes separately from the rest, so from the cream and from the milk and everything else. And if that separates onto the top and it freezes, we will get solid water, which is ice. Okay, so I'm sure you can think of many other things which include emulsifiers and our emulsions. Any sort of creamy sauce is going to have an emulsifier in there. Things like yogurt are of course emulsions as well. So there are, there are loads of them about, you see them all the time. Uh, and these emulsifiers are what allow them to be possible. Other it doesn't have to be in food either. Other examples include paint. So paint, for example, is going to be some oil in water, um, which gives us a certain colour. Not all paint is made like this, by the way, but water-based paint will be. And we're also going to get other emulsions, such as a lot of a lot of makeup actually is emulsion. Your shower gels, your shampoo, all sorts of things. They're all possible because of these magical things called emulsifiers. Now this part is going to get pretty in depth, so if you're taking the foundation course, then don't worry about it, you just need to know what emulsions are um, and where you can find them. Now we're going to go on to how an emulsifier actually works. And so let's say for example we had an environment, this is going to be within a beaker, this is just water. So I'm going to draw the edges just so you get sort of a picture. There we go, we've got this container which has water inside it like that. Now, if we are going to have an emulsion in there, sorry, if we're gonna have an oil in there, let's say we have an oil droplet that looks like this. Normally, oil is going to just lie on the top, but because of an emulsifier, we can have droplets separated like this. So I'll show you how in a second. But an emulsifier, is a molecule which is going to have two distinct features. One of them is this purple head here. It doesn't have to be purple, this is just to show you. So you've got a head which is hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. Okay? What hydrophilic actually means, I've spelt that wrong, haven't I? There's two L's there. Hydrophilic. What hydrophilic means is it loves water basically. So water loving. 
So the head likes water, it likes to be around water, and so we call it hydrophilic. The other part of the molecule is going to be a long chain, which is actually a hydrocarbon chain. So just like alkanes and alkenes, etc. A long hydrocarbon chain, let's say looking something like that. It's not meant to be a sperm cell, it might look like one. This tail is what we call hydrophobic. And obviously if you've got a phobia of anything, you're scared of it, you don't like it. So water, you could just say water repelling. It's repelled by water and it repels water. It doesn't like to be around water, but it does like to be around um, organic substances. One of those, of course, is oil. So we have a hydrophilic head here and a hydrophobic tail here. The hydrophobic tail is going to look for the oil because it really doesn't like the water. So I wrote hydrophobia in there, didn't I? It meant to be hydrophobic, it's a hydrophobic tail. It doesn't like water, so it's going to seek out the oil. On the other hand, the hydrophilic head here really likes the water, so it's not going to like the oil, it is going to like to sit in the water. As a result, these emulsifiers are going to find um, a way of the head being in water and the tail being in oil. And of course, the simplest way for them to do this is to arrange themselves in the oil like that. So the tail is perfectly happy there, loves the water, sorry, loves the oil, hates the water. Whereas the head, well that likes the water, but it doesn't like the oil. So it's gonna arrange itself like this. And if we get this happen, many times, we start to get the oil droplet surrounded by these emulsifiers. And this is very important because it stops the oil droplets, so this one, and this one up here, it stops these oil droplets combining as well because you've got these emulsifier molecules which are in the way so the oil can't reach the other oil. Now, it also stops the water just creating its own layer because you've got all of these droplets in there and the heads love the water. So the head is gonna make sure that the oil droplet stays in the water and doesn't get separated out. Now, what's gonna eventually happen is if we zoom out a little bit, we are going to get a lot of these uh, droplets all throughout and spaced evenly throughout the water. And so this is more like what you're going to see. So each one of these droplets is surrounded by emulsifier, probably going to be more emulsifier molecules than that, but this is just to make it simple. Each one of them has a hydrophobic head, which is surrounded by water, so it's perfectly happy. And each tail is surrounded by oil, which makes that perfectly happy. And that means that these droplets spread themselves evenly throughout the mixture, and you end up with that creamy texture, um, which is consistent all the way through. So that is why milk, going back to the pictures at the top, that is why milk looks like this, because it's full of emulsifier. All these droplets are spaced out and, and they're all happy. Whereas here, we have no emulsifier to aid the oil spreading out through the water, and therefore the oil prefers the oil and the water stays where it is as well and separates. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. I hope you now get an idea of how emulsifiers work. If you do have any questions on that, then please do leave it in the comments below or send me an email. But I'll see you in the next video.